Hey, it's Michael Creasy here, the Roving Brothers reporter. I'm in North Bay, Ontario with a lovely and talented, fearless, I have to put fearless in there, introduce yourself pretty please. Sarah Suzanian. And Sarah, what is it that makes you this controversial figure that police hate, that other nurses revere, and uh, that freedom fighters rally to? <laughs> well, I spoke out against the lockdowns. Be who you want to be in freedom and joy. Okay, so that means you're a nurse. Oh, yes. Are you still a nurse? I'll always be a nurse. I'm now the people's nurse. Okay, so you, they didn't take your qualifications away? Or... I was fired from both my jobs and my license is under investigation. Okay, so what are you doing now for a living? I, I'm growing Canadian frontline nurses. Awesome, so let's do a plug for them. Where can they find out more about that organization? CanadianFrontlineNurses.ca um, and we're also on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, although we're quite censored, uh, Telegram. So let me ask you, what was it about what you shared that was so controversial that they had to take you out? Well, I, I lost two jobs. So the first one was, a, I just wrote in a private group about how um, irritated I was about the lockdowns, how they were wrong. Um, I wrote that the PCR tests were not diagnostic tests. I wrote that the outbreaks were ridiculous. Um, and that was it. Yeah. That got me fired. So was your specialty, you were working in senior care homes? Okay. So can you give us kind of a perspective prior to COVID? What was it like in the care facilities? Well, the care facilities, you know, nobody really wants to be there at any times. People didn't like it before that. You can tell, like, they don't get the best food. They don't get, you know, it's always been compared that prisoners have a better uh, life than people that work in nursing homes. Now, it's it's much worse. Like, we have to think all these people have these. So people go to nursing homes. It's their last stop. Yeah. So all they have left is their loved ones. And you can see when their loved ones show up, how they become, they come alive. And so, and so now they've removed that for over a year. Uh, now and you right away you can see how they deteriorated especially the ones that are used to having their families every day I had a lady that had a heart attack within a week yeah. of not having but her family as a species we're hot wired to be with other people exactly. right and when you deny that especially as you said this is your last stop before you're checking off this planet to deny them access to family to loved ones you've, you've basically they have nothing else yeah there's nothing to live for they have nothing else but then and then they have each other inside there but then when there's so they're doing these inaccurate testings now three times a week for our staff and and so we know they're inaccurate and and so every time there's a positive they lock down the unit now you're talking about PCR testing still yes. yeah so I think in Ontario we're using a cycle threshold count of 40 to 45 yes. and who recommended I think 28 was the number yes so we're doing what about 90 to 95 percent false positives I think 97 I heard but yes yeah. absolutely and uh, and so these and, and then they lock everyone down in their rooms they can't come out um, so that's really detrimental because you have to think, like if you're someone who walks with a walker all the time and you stop walking, yeah. you lose that skill, right? Well, your muscles start to atrophy. Yes, yeah. and then so we're seeing a lot of people going from walker to wheelchair and then wheelchair to bed. And once it's bed, there's a lot of sores and they're dying from sores. And this happened before, but now this is uh, happening a lot more on top of being stressed, right? Their body is just, they're, they're giving up. Yeah, well, they've got nothing to live for. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me ask you this. Like, you look fairly fit. Like, you know, you could probably take me. Yeah. Be a bloody fight, but, you, but you probably win. So, what can you recommend to people right now that are watching? Instead of being worried about a vaccine, what can they do? Healthy lifestyle choices, vitamins, that kind of thing. Anything you can recommend? Absolutely. I just want to say I had fibromyalgia, and uh, which is supposedly a long-term disability, and I was told to take uh, four or five type different types of pills. They're band-aid pills, and I decided no, I'm not doing that. And I took care of myself, took care of my mental health, started eating better, exercising. Uh, I lost 60 pounds. I got sober three years ago, and I, I no longer have fibromyalgia, which is supposedly a long-term disability. So I'm telling people, you know, the, the body heals itself, but eat healthy, organic foods. Um, exercise, go out, breathe some air in the sunlight. It's all the same things. Be with friends and family, laugh, you know, sun, all these things. That's what's going to keep you healthy. Thanks for taking time out. And again, congratulations on being such a warrior and fighting the good fight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. How can you help? What can you be a part of? Be who you want to be in freedom and joy.